Uh, yeah, so... Uh, hmm. I'm going to try and uh, play with this game a little bit. As you can see, that's the format there, so it's all, all set up. Uh, it's actually set up for the campaign game, and we'll see what happens. And one of the interesting things with the North African campaign was that it really did rely enormously on, from what I can tell, two, two key factors. I think I was going to make some sort of profound commentary about why this is such an interesting uh, game for the OCS model. Uh, my very brief and quick reading of the history in the background here is, uh, you know, the, well, I'll put it this way. The Germans and the Axis allies had an opportunity to uh, compensate for their loss of the Battle of Britain and the plans to secure Western Europe front. And I think um, the Mediterranean and in North Africa in particular, Egypt, uh, Suez Canal and the oil fields beyond there, uh, capturing those was another way, a more indirect way, eventually, but another way of, uh, of uh, isolating, reducing and eventually incapacitating uh, Great Britain. Their failure to do so and uh, all the consequences of that obviously led to uh, you know, the loss of World War II, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I think the important point is that you know, Hitler made a choice to head east into Russia. Those choices that he made, uh, and one of them uh, is reflected in his uh, reaction to a meeting with one of the Soviet ministers, foreign ministers, uh, about the uh, breakup or control of or annexation of uh, Bulgaria. So uh, this whole this whole area just north of here in you know, Bulgaria and Greece, uh, the island of Malta, uh, the uh, Mussolini's actions of invading Greece, uh, which drove the British to uh, come and jump into the fray there, and uh, basically the you know the Germans had to come and bail out the Italians with their. Uh, Worthless, or well, not worthless, they did a reasonable job, but uh, got pushed back pretty aggressively once the British landed and the Germans had to then intervene. Uh, and a lot of those external factors are kind of built into this game. Uh, the invasion of Crete, the uh, force reductions in Africa to support Greece. And all of it kind of plays out uh, from what I've read anyway, it plays out pretty interestingly and it makes for a highly variable game. So there's less of uh, the historical lockstep, month by month comparative analysis that you perhaps have seen with Good Arians, Blitz Creek and Case Blue. And I, I think uh, people who have access to this game and who've played this game uh, enjoy it for the fact that it's a great game and it's also an interesting simulation. So th that really attracted me to wanting to play this. So a little bit more on uh, why why I'm playing it. Uh, those historical factors are all important and they're kind of macro level strategic, strategic things that impact what happened here. So uh, Rommel's ability and the Italian's ability to uh, push uh, resources to this area were uh, impacted and restricted by what was going on elsewhere. And Churchill and the Allies desire to uh, maintain and support and control North Africa was predicated, I think, upon the fact that they saw this as a significant threat. They saw that this was perhaps their soft underbelly in protecting Western Europe. Now, I may be wrong in that, that's just an assumption based on what I've read. But I think one of the reasons why Churchill was so adamant about uh, uh, you know, uh, protecting this area and so you know, vehement with uh, the, the rotating door of uh, theater commanders here was that he knew that they needed to control the Suez Canal, the oil, and the Mediterranean so that they could protect the West. Uh, the Western Front uh, and prepare for an invasion of Europe at some point in the future. I don't believe that they saw this, uh, this theater, this coastline, this area as the opportunity for an attack into the soft underbelly of, of, 
of Southern Europe. I think that is, I don't know where that came from, but I, I don't believe it. I don't think it's a, I think it's a myth. I think the, 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 the Allies never had an opportunity to be uh, proactive in terms of planning an invasion in 40, 41, or 42, or hell, even 43, right? It was really uh, not until the Americans got more deeply involved that we saw any uh, need or desire to be uh, have this this area as a some sort of staging uh, place. So I think the British long term you know, strategic plan was really more defensive than it was offensive from from my take on the games on the games on, on the history. Anyway, enough said. So so with that in mind, what what really uh, when we're looking at this game, there's a few interesting things that are different from the other OCS games that I've played. There's no, from what I can figure, there's no role you make to determine how much supply you get per turn. You have, uh, and I might grab the camera so that we can have a look at it in up close if the camera will reach. Yeah, look at the pieces while I talk. Uh, there's a chart for Sicily, which is an unlimited uh, supply dump. And it's also where most of the... Um, so in Sicily, you have this unrestricted, unlimited supply dump, but you only have a certain number of um, uh, Mediterranean sea points that you can move uh, uh, SPs uh, per turn. And you can either move those to Tripoli, or you can, uh, you can then, you can uh, potentially move them directly to say Beng Benghazi or Tobruk or whatever the case may be. And they've got these nice little halting boxes here so you don't get the massive stacks. But there's a poor capacity for each, each area. And then there's this intercoastal, uh, so maybe I'll put this back up here since we can't really see it. Uh, there's this intercoastal uh, capability. So as we as we bring uh, items, uh, SP and uh, replacement points and things in uh, from Sicily, we need to bring them to Tripoli. And uh, from Tripoli, we can dump them uh, onto this little track here, which is a larger track here on the map, but this is all kind of consolidated down. Uh, and depending on the number of movement points, we're moving from Tripoli and Tunisia, basically, I guess, uh, all the way to here, to the Marble Arch. And then, once you're there, you do this abstracted movement. Once you're there, you can then go on road movement or there's a little bit of rail action there. The alternative is, once you land uh, from Tripoli, you can also, I've got poor capacity of 6 SP equivalent. I can start doing inter intercoastal movement and move supply to the, the various ports. <coughs> All very interesting, right? Um, this intercoastal and uh, uh, Mediterranean movement varies by turn. So there's a table here, and by month it tells me how much I can bring in. So in September, I can move 2 SP by sea and 3 by intercoastal. And in October, 101, November, 2 and 2, uh, then through uh, 41. Uh, the numbers go up, but then there's also a negative impact depending on what's happening in Malta or in Greece or with uh, the air war. I think that also impacts it as well. So it's a really interesting uh, variability and, <laughs> and things to go on going on, and you've got to try and um, you've got to try and work out where's the the most optimized place to get the, your units onto the physical map so that you can then bring them into the, into the battle. Now, we've got to do the typical, over here, we've got uh, you know, the usual situation where there's the, where is it? This, this is the Mussolini, you can't really see it on here, but right here is the Mussolini line. So, uh, you know, the first objective, that's the 12th of September. 
the first objective we're going to have to do is cross this line, get the right amount of forces in, and then if we're brave, we're going to want to try and uh, uh, capture this city over here, which according to everyone is not possible, uh, just based on unit capabilities, supply, and the defensive terrain. All right, so we're going to we're going to kind of play this out. Uh, turn on two. Uh, I'm probably going to post some questions about how the um, supply does work, so that I'm just to ratify that I am doing it the correct way. Last thing we want to do is, if I do end up playing the campaign, is to play this uh, incorrectly for a couple of hundred hours or however long it's going to take. It may not take that long. We may know at the end of 41 or something who's the winner. Who knows? All right. Uh, Certainly not the end of 40, but uh, probably the end of 41. Uh, there's a lot of reinforcements, a lot of pieces. Actually, it's not that many pieces, probably 850 odd combat units and then another 250, 300 information chits. And I'm just using the chits from uh, from TBL. I haven't, I'm not gonna punch all the information counts. All right, I'm just gonna wrap this up here for the moment. And, uh, oh yeah, this, this, is, uh, this is my little, uh, my little cheat sheet of all the different dates that things happen. I don't know if you can you can see that or not. Probably not, but that uh, just gives me a summary of everything that, that happens over the, the course of the two and a half years, uh, or two and uh, a quarter years, anyway. Uh, the big events uh, that uh, the game changes, like the Mussolini line. And there's my phone. All right, I'm up with you. Uh, just to follow up on my comments about supply, no, uh, I was correct. The the way it works is that uh, you you pull supply from Sicily, transport it to Tripoli, which is kind of the hub, and from there, so that's me that's Mediterranean shipping. Uh, you can ship two units or two units, two SP a turn, or whatever the the logistical chart tells tells you you can move. You move that to Tripoli, and Tripoli has a pretty uh, large port capacity, so it can do uh, six SP, which means more than enough to uh, probably move troops uh, by sea if you needed to, and uh, SP. And then, uh, so six spread across the, the various ports. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, Tobruk can take uh, one SP a turn, and these guys over here can do two each, to a pop here, to uh, two T a pop, so one SP total, one SP total. And there's smaller ports along here, but then you've got to, you've got to be able to. Uh, uh, this, sorry, that was out of camera. There's smaller ports to the west that will allow you to um, bring in one T as well, but you have a three SP limit per turn based on lo the logistics chart. And, and in fact, in October it goes down to one. So that'll be challenging. Um, <clears throat> and then the other, the other point I wanted to make when I was talking about a little bit of the historical or strategic background, it seems to me here too that in this particular campaign there were really significant technological differences between the fighting forces over time. So initially the, uh, the Italians really uh, had the weaker armor units, uh, the weakest uh, anti-tank weapons and the English had uh, well theirs were pretty weak as well except for the Matilda which had very very thick armor for its time it was a 50 millimeter depth or, or thickness for the for the armor on the Matilda but both sides only had 40 millimeter or two pound uh, guns on the uh, on their various weapon platforms and that wasn't until uh, the Africa Corps arrived that we saw 88 millimeter guns being used against uh, these the Matilda uh, units from the British and their Panzers had uh, higher penetration rates and uh, capabilities than obviously the Italians platforms and also better than the British. Then we sort of flip again where the British brought in newer equipment and newer platforms. I, I've got all the names written down but I can't recall them off the top of my head. Um, not Valentine's, but some of the others, maybe Crusaders, I forget what they were. 
nevertheless, so there was a technological flip-flop that went on once or twice, and then it was really the other big factor, which we've already talked about as supply, but the, it really was an amassing by the uh, both sides of uh, supply and the ability to move that supply effectively uh, as a result of either shipping or uh, prevention via air interdiction that drove the ebb and flow of the battle. Really uh, a massive island is what we're looking at. Uh, on one side you have the ocean, on the other side you have a sea of sand. Uh, so it's kind of cool and uh, interesting to, it'll be interesting to see if the ebb and flow plays out in this game the way it did historically. Uh, despite all the random events we're going to have and the, the impact of Greece and the impact of Malta and, and various bits and pieces. We'll see if we get that feel. Anyway, there we go. So uh, we're now uh, we've done supply, we've done shipping. We're going to try and shuffle some SP around by land, move a few guys and uh, see if we can't begin to fulfill our uh, Mussolini line requirements for... Uh,